It's a bunny rabbit. A little wild bunny rabbit. And listen to the birds. This is at the end of June in Nevada City, Montana. And this is one of the destinations I hope that Cindy and I have the opportunity to return to this year. Not only as we did on our way to Florida a couple of years ago and drive through it, but this time to spend time around here exploring the area and all the things that it offers. Basically we've decided that even though I would love to drive across Canada coast to coast, the fact is is that Canada is very large. That's number one. Number two is that Canada is very expensive. So we decided to head south of the border again this summer on a lot different trip because back a couple of years ago when we were heading we we're going to Florida which meant that everything was done on a rush we were in a hurry we had to get down to see the uh, launching of the space shuttle Atlantis but this time what we want to do is kick back in the back roads of the USA and check it out now like I said Canada is expensive I'll give you an idea overnight a few days ago in Kelowna where we live the price of gasoline went up 12 cents a liter now for people who are used to the gallon people from the United States watching this video that's like the price of gas in the US going up 50 cents a gallon overnight there's camping all around here so imagine that uh, well you can go trail riding horseback there's all sorts of things you can do here so think about spending a couple of nights in here wonder what the ghost stories are like but the accommodations gas food everything is a lot higher in Canada than in the United States that's a fact the other fact is that the United States offers so much amazing things to see. From Nevada City, just a few miles down the road is Virginia City. And these are things I would love to spend more time in. To go around, check out the shops, the stores, maybe find some old timers. And here's some of the stories. You just don't find things like this in Canada. One more thing I gotta say about Canadian travel and tourism to people from the USA or uh, the uh, Europe, wherever. If you're not familiar with Canada, it is a huge country with a really small population. I mean, basically, if you combine the population of British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba, I still don't think you'd have as many people as live in Ontario, one province. And even Ontario isn't what you would say crowded. So we get these little tourism films, you know, I've seen them for Canada, promoting Canada for travel and tourism, and they show the northern lights and the Arctic with whales and polar bears, and then the BC coast with totem poles, Niagara in Ontario, the east coast, maritime, and the beautiful little villages and fishermen and ice uh, flows going by. It's gorgeous and There's it's so beautiful. Much to see and do along here, but we still have to hit uh, Yellowstone Park and, and then go through Yellowstone towards uh, well Buffalo uh, in Wyoming. There's a lot of territory we've got to cover yet today, but uh, like I said, we're not coming down here just for this area. 
We're heading to Florida. So we're going to Florida, man. It's a long way away. So anyway, getting back to that, you can find all that stuff in Canada for sure. Amazing scenery, fantastic destinations, but the country is huge. And if you're planning to come here for two weeks, three weeks, and you think that you're going to be able to see all of that and experience it, not a hope in you know what. It is that large. Even if you're coming from Europe and you're and I've, we've seen and talked with people that rent RVs and they go for a drive. Now, if you're going to be driving at a normal rate and stopping to check out some of the parks and sites and stuff like that, it's just huge. It is just huge. Now, the United States is also huge, but it's made up of a lot of states. And each state is like a, I've said this a million times in videos, it's like a country to itself. And you can go through a state in a day or even less. Phoenix, so how long has it taken you to get this far? Uh, seven weeks. Seven weeks? Are you, you're not uh, American? No. No. Europe? Yeah. What part? The Netherlands. Netherlands. I was thinking that'd be a beautiful place to go bike riding. Is it hard? Yeah, sometimes it's hard, yeah. yeah. You're going that way? Yeah. Beautiful old western towns ahead of you. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, it's, and it'll be downhill. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nice talking to you. So many parts of the U.S. you can go through, even sometimes two or three states in a day, if you're really pushing it. But again, the United States, I wouldn't recommend pushing it because there's so many things to see. So basically for 2013, we would like to go for a drive south of the border, explore basically the uh, western states, possibly all the way down to Texas, maybe, but... Uh, take our time exploring around. There's places we've seen that I would like to go back and uh, revisit. And there's places we haven't seen. Like, we went through Yellowstone Park, but Grand Tetons are nearby. And uh, the bicyclists we talked with came up from the Grand Tetons and saw several grizzly bears. There's uh, large herds of buffalo, elk. You can at times even see or hear wolves. Realize that the vastness of this size, that's... Cindy and I are talking, and we were talking to this uh, girl from the Netherlands. She's been biking for seven weeks from Phoenix, Arizona, up this way, and her ultimate destination is Calgary, Canada. And uh, I just don't think that a lot of people realize the size of this country. Uh, continent, I should say, because the United States and Canada are separate, but they're both huge. And uh, the ever-changing scenery. On, the, on our return trip from Florida, I look forward to going through Arizona and uh, uh, New Mexico, Texas. It's just constant, constant changing. It's, it's amazing. Look at those mountains. Oh, my God. And we did do that on our return trip. Drive through Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and everywhere. It was an amazing experience. It's a heck of a way to lose weight if you want to. Yeah. One more thing i got to point out. Actually, there's going to be a lot of things I'm pointing out. The roads in the western United States are among the cleanest roads we have ever traveled virtually no litter along the roadway. In Wyoming, a lot of the activities revolve around fly fishing, hunting, and there are shops all over the place for it. Yellowstone Western. is in Wyoming, but we're coming in from the Montana side, and there's a lot of shops, as you're starting to approach Yellowstone, that have to do with fishing, fly, fly fishing fly. specifically, and... Uh, Again, these things would be awesome to explore. And maybe, if time were to permit, even do a little bit of fly fishing and uh, check out their rivers. Chamber of Commerce. Oh, that's pretty in there. That's a bank for Pete's sakes.
absolutely beautiful little towns. Wherever you can see the road, just a side of it as I'm filming, you can see that there's no litter or garbage along this area. Which, which I, I'm just absolutely blown away because even here in pristine Canada there's a lot of garbage and litter by the side of the roads. It doesn't matter if you're in the Okanagan heading towards Vancouver, wherever garbage is a constant. Okay, we saw something here that might be pronghorn antelope and I've never seen or have film of them. Now they might be deer, but I don't think so. Even in vast areas like this, there are so many things to see if you're taking your time and are looking for it. Aside of the fact that we did see deer, we were also encountering pronghorn antelope, which like I said, I've never seen before. It was amazing, like the only time I've ever seen pronghorn antelope have been in uh, magazines like Outdoor Life or uh, hunting shows where people are going out to blow them away. And to see them in fields, like these are wild, even though there are fences around. Just like deer, they probably managed to get through them one way or another. And uh, it was just an amazing thing, like this is the only North American antelope Period. There's no other antelopes in North America. And you can see them. And we saw lots of them, by the way, in uh, Montana, Wyoming, South Dakota, uh, Nebraska, South Dakota, uh, all the way down to New Mexico and Arizona. We saw pronghorn antelopes all so nice over the place. Scenic, dare I say. The Grand Tetons are something that I would love for us to drive through and, and basically drive through the Grand Tetons the all the way through into uh, Yellowstone and do Yellowstone East much East slower because it is an amazing place to discover. And in Yellowstone, you're on a super volcano.